last lesson, last lesson we looked at something in particular. We started to look at this idea of algebra. I know that algebra can represent these unknown, unknown uh, variables or values. And we looked at adding and subtracting. Now we're going to look at multiplying and dividing them. And in fact, I would say that these ones are even easier, right? If we're multiplying them, and remember, we can follow the same rules as you would with normal fractions. If I'm multiplying them, we simply multiply across the numerator or the domain, so the top or the bottom. Right? If we're dividing, though, you remember a little trick for dividing fractions. James, what's that trick that we use? If I'm dividing fractions, something like this, 1 over 2 divided by 3 over 4, how can I rewrite that to make it easier? You flip the second one. Then. Yeah, we flip the second one, and it's called taking the reciprocal. But I also change it to a, a multiplication question, and that gives me the same answer. So that's a lot easier. Okay, so all I have to do when I'm multiplying those... So cross multiply. For these ones here, I multiply across the numerator and the denominator. That would just be 4 over 6. Because when I'm multiplying fractions, you just multiply across the numerator. Across the denominator. Yeah, you can, but for these algebraic ones, we can't do that. So we, we, have, to, we have to write do it by hand. Now, something that you want to look out for is, is simplifying, right? For simplifying them, I know that these ones here, I could just divide through the x's here. I can divide through the x's there. That would just be 2. This one here, I see often that students will also try, they just see x and x and they say, oh, I can divide it, and that would equal 2 as well. 2 plus. Let me show you why that doesn't work. So, for example, if I take this example, 2 times 6 on 2, I know I can divide these two out. Times and, 6. And that would give me... 6, okay. And that works out because 12 divided by 2 is, is also 6. What if I look at this example? 2 plus 6 over 2, what would you expect the answer to be? It should be... 4. Two, yeah, it should be 4. If you did this, oh, you just end up with 6. So, if there's additions here, if there's an addition, you can't actually do that. This does not work. Do not do that. Do not do that. What you want to do is, you want to see if there's multiplication, you can simplify them. So, no? Yes. Yeah. That's very Asian. What? No and yes. Yeah. So, if you're trying to simplify, you need to look for multiplication. How can we use these rules here? Well, the first one, because it's just multiplication, it's really easy. Just multiply across. 5y times 6z, or 5 times 6 is 30. And then my variables, I can just put them together. I've got 5z, good. What about on the denominator? I'll have. 21. 21. Awesome. Is there anything that I can simplify? Can I simplify any of the letters? Yeah. Because these letters are multiplied by each other, because I'm writing next to each other, I can just divide them out. Yeah. So I get 30z over 21. Can't you divide both of them by 3? Oh, I could actually, yeah. Again, with this one, it's just simple multiplication. I've got 3x, that should be 3x, then 3x, times negative 8y, let's just put those together. I'll get negative 24xy. On the denominator, Mick, if I multiply this out, what would I get here if I multiplied the two denominators? So, minus y and 12z, yeah? So, is it 12? Yeah, so that's 12. Oh, sorry, it's just a 12 there. So it would be negative 12 yz. Okay, and same idea. I want to look, is there anything I can divide through? I see there's two y's multiplied together. I can divide those through. These negative 24's and negative 12's. 2xz. Yeah. yeah, so I just want to be really careful here. I want to think, okay, I'll still draw my fraction. I've still got my fraction here. If I put negative 24 over negative 12 in your calculator, what number do you actually get? You get you get 2. That 2 needs to go on the numerator, because that's a whole number 2. And then there's an x there as well. What should go on the denominator? The z. The z hasn't changed it. The z stays there, because I haven't done anything with it. Okay? The z stays there, because I haven't done anything with it. But remember, that 2 there, that actually needs to go to the numerator on the top, because if you put negative 24 divided by negative 12 in your calculator, you'll get a positive 2. Okay. Any questions about that so far?